All right, back from work. Let's finish this. So we did, we uh, began with the end in mind again. That was kind of fun. <clears throat> and we did the special reading. So let's hit the, get the normal stuff here for um, March 2nd. Because there's just so much happening in the world. So we'll just go from the end backwards. Since that seems to be pretty fun. There's not a lot. Hmm. Nine one to eleven. Then the Lord said to Moses, "Go to Pharaoh and tell him." Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, "Let my people go, so that they may serve me. But if you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them, now hear this: the hand of the Lord will fall on your livestock, which you which are out in the field, on the horses, the donkeys, the camels, the herds, and the flocks. A horrible plague shall come, but the Lord will make." A distinction <clears throat> between the livestock of Israel and the livestock of Egypt, so that nothing that belongs to the Israelites will die. The Lord set a definite time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord will do this thing in the land. And the Lord did this thing the next day in all kinds of livestock of Egypt. And, and all kinds of the livestock of Egypt died, but the livestock of the Israelites. Israelites of the I of the livestock of the Israelites not one died. Then Pharaoh sent men to investigate, and not even one of the livestock of the Israelites had died. But the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and his mind was firmly set. Hmm, the plagues. What's well, interesting because where does that where's locust? Because they're about to have locust. So they're not quite the food's not quite in the row. But there's a plague in Egypt right now of uh, locusts. Well, this is gnats and insects, frogs, water turned to blood. Okay, so here's one. The second one. The second one is frogs. Three is the plague of gnats and insects. Four is the Egyptian cattle die. Five is boils. Six is hail. Darkness is seven. The last plague. Okay, so there's eight. The plague of locusts. Okay, that's in there. So, wow, are we already on eight, seven, six? Are they already here on the six of eight plagues? Is that where locust, uh, Egypt is right now for the evil that they're doing in the world? Um, it might be so. So, let my people go was stated, and then Exodus 35, 1 through 38. So let's do the meaty part. The Sabbath emphasized. Moses gathered all the congregation. And we are going 35 all the way to 3820. So Moses gathered all the congregation of the sons of Israel together and said to them, These are the things which the Lord has commanded you to do. For six days work may be done, but on the seventh day, and but the seventh day shall be holy, a holy day for you, a Sabbath of complete rest to the Lord. Whoever does any kind of work on that day shall be put to death. You shall not kindle a fire. So we heard this before. You shall not kindle a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath. And Moses said to the congregation of the sons of Israel, This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever has a willing heart, let him bring it as the Lord's offering. With a willing heart, right? Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet fabric, fine linen, goats, hair, and ram's skins, dyed red, and skins of porpoises, and acacia. I just think that's translated wrong. People say that it's not skins of porpoises, but they were on the Mediterranean. Um, skins of uh, porpoises, and acacia wood, and olive oil, and they were fishermen, right? And olive oil for the lighting and balsam for the anointing oil. Oh, excuse me. 
and for the fragrant incense and onyx stones and other stones to be set for the ephod and the breastpiece. So as we went in the first part of this portion down here, um, we heard this exact thing talking about offerings before. The tabernacle workmen, which we, is a, so this is a, a double portion of what we heard earlier. Tabernacle workmen, let every skilled and talented man among you come and make everything that the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle, the sacred dwelling of the Lord, its tent and its covering, its hooks, its boards, its bars, its pillars, and its sockets, the Ark of the Covenant and its carrying poles, with the mercy seat and the veil, the partition curtain between God and man, the partition curtain of the screen to hang between the holy place and the holy of holies, which was very thick, like multiple inches thick. So the fact that God eventually tore this curtain, the separation between man as a sign of the end of the separation between God and man, and there was no one there, and to be able to, it was impossible and supernatural that this super thick woven curtain was torn because it was just not possible to do. Um, okay, so that's coming later, but to hang between the whole, so they're building, this is when they were building all the stuff. The table and its carrying poles and all the utensils and the bread of the divine presence, the show bread. And David ate the bread of the divine presence, the show bread, when he ran back hungry. From the battle. So the lampstand also for the light and its utensils and its lamps and the oil for the light and the altar of incense and its carrying poles and the anointing oil and the fragrant incense, the screen or curtain for the doorway at the entrance of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering with its bronze grating, its carrying poles and its utensils, the wash basin and its base stand, its baser stand, the uh, quartz curtains, its support poles and their sockets, and the curtain for the gate of the courtyard, the pegs of the tabernacle and the pegs of the court and their cords, the finely woven garments for ministering in the holy place, place the holy garments for Aaron and the priest, and the garments for his sons to minister as priests. Gifts to be received here. Then all the congregation of the Israelites left Moses' presence. Everyone whose heart stirred him and everyone whose spirit moved came uh, whose spirit moved him came and brought the Lord's offering. They brought the Lord's offering. They didn't go fleece the flock. It, you, you had the opportunity to bring. It was your choice. It was your heart that moved you to bring. The spirit moved you to bring. So all these you know, if if you're down on church or something like that. They're not there to fleece you, you know. They were commanded to gather this stuff in the section we already read, which I recorded the other part and read this stuff. So you want to go check that out. Uh, but then he put the end to it because there was embezzlement happening. And for 27 years, the money didn't get to the place to fix the temple, which he was obviously talking about. Tabernacle workmen get the stuff done. They need to get paid, but no one was paying them to get it done. For 27 years, these people were starving. <clears throat> they might have paid to get the basics done so they could run their scam, you know, in the temple. But somebody was embezzling in there. And uh, there's an interesting story about that. All right. <clears throat> every man. So where were we? Then all the congregation left. Him. Okay. Everyone um, whose heart was stored and everyone whose spirit moved him came and brought the Lord's offering to be used for the tent of meeting, for all its service, and for the holy garments. Then all whose hearts moved them, both men and women, came and brought brooches, earrings, nose rings, signet rings. you got to understand, these are signs of slavery. This is your gold ring in your ear, your nose that says you're a slave to the king of Egypt. So literally, you have gold on you, literally, and in you, it's through you. So they're removing this stuff, the sign that they are owned by another. And so the message here is that they are owned by the Lord. So that's a nugget. Let's put that down. Gifts received. <clears throat> 22. So this is 
Hmm, that's awesome. Every man who had his possession blue or purple scarlet fabric and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin dyed red and porpoise skins brought them. Everyone who could make an offering of silver or bronze bought, brought it as the Lord's offering. Every man who had in his possession acacia wood <clears throat> for any works of service brought it. All the skilled and talented women spun threads with their hands and brought what they had spun, blue and purple and scarlet fabric and fine linen. All the women whose heart stirred with a skill spun the goat's hair. Is there fashion designers? this? <clears throat> the leaders brought onyx stones and other stones to be put in settings for the ephod and for the breastpiece. And spiced and spice and olive oil for the light, and for the <coughs> excuse me anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. The Israelites, all the men and women whose heart moved them, all the men and women whose heart moved them, to bring material for all the work which the Lord had commanded through Moses to be done, brought a free will voluntary offering to the Lord. Beautiful thing. <clears throat> then Moses said to the Israelites, See the Lord called by name. Bez, Bez, Bezalel, Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, and the tribe of Judah. And he has filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom and skill, with intelligence and understanding, and with the knowledge in all areas of craftsmen, to devise artistic designs to work in gold, silver, and bronze, and in cutting of stones for setting and the carving of wood for work in every skilled craft. He has also put in Basilel, Bas, Basilel, Bas, Basilel's heart the willingness to teach others the same skills. So he's running a gem, gem shop. He's the Gem Institute of America, Gemological Institute of America, basically. Wow, that's been going on forever. Both he and... Oholiab, son of Ahishamak, of the tribe of Dan, as he has filled them with skill to do the work of an engraver. Lord, fill us with skill to do the work you designed us for. Do the, do the work of the engraver, of a designer, of an embroiderer in blue, purple, scarlet, and fine linen, and of a weaver, makers of every work and embroiders of excellent designs. Through 38, the tabernacle underwritten. You have a vision, he's going to give you money for the vision or provision for vision. The tabernacle underwritten. Who paid for this, basically? So, Basilel and Aholiab and every skilled person in whom the Lord had put ability and understanding to know how to do all the work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work according to all that the Lord has commanded. So Moses called Basilel and Aholiab and every skilled person in whom the Lord... Okay, so what do these names mean? We're, right now we're missing something, right? Because we don't know what these names mean. This is exactly what this book is for, the book of names, so that we're totally not getting the levity of what this means. So Moses, the light... Moses means pulled the light... Um, or Moses means pulled on God called Bazel Aholiab, which means some good stuff we're about to find out. Basilel, please be in this book. Come on. Where are we? Alright, we're going to keep reading while that loads. Taking forever. Are we up? No. So Moses called Basilel and Aholiab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had put ability who everyone whose heart had stirred him to come do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings which the Israelites had brought from 
for the construction of the sanctuary to prepare it for service, and they continued to bring him free will voluntary offerings every morning. Um, every morning, and all the skilled there we go. And all the skilled men who were doing all the work on the sanctuary came each one from the work he was doing. And they said to Moses, the people are bringing much more than enough for the construction work. This is like the fish and the bread. There's just more than enough, right? People are bringing much more than enough. So if you did a word search for more than enough, oh yeah, that would be pretty cool. Let's, call, let's do that one. <laughs> Topic. So this is Exodus 36. And, all right, so we're looking up Bazalel. What does that even mean? Oh. Holy hell. That is lame. A lot of them are in there, but uh, Oleum, Father's Tent. Father, it means Father's Tent. Why? Father's Tent. A Danite artificer who assisted Bazalel in the construction of the tabernacle and furniture. So literally, this is all, but it means father's tent. I like it. All right. It's a weird. Yeah, this place doesn't know what it's doing. Hmm. Ah, chief artisan of the tabernacle. Ancestry.com, no thank you. Genealogy today. This is too bad, there's not. Hmm. That's a lot. That's different. Yeah, oh, in the in the protection of God. There we go. Came from Wikipedia. I don't know how trustworthy that is, but.
So when we read this, we will put in the protection of God every time we see Basilel, right? So let's just try my new thing. This is what I like to do. All right, it's enough for now. And then Basel and then Aholiab means Father's Tent. <laughs> and we'll see if this changes the way it reads. Just something I've been feeling like doing. All right. In the shadow of protection of God and Father's tent, and every skilled person in whom the Lord has put ability and understanding to know how to do all the work in the construction of the sanctuary shall work according to all that the Lord had commanded. So Moses called in the shadow of protection of God and Father's tent and every skilled person whom the Lord had in whom the Lord had put ability, everyone who had, whose heart had started him to come and do the work they received from pulling on God, right? If we go back up here, Moses means what? Where was that? Moses means drawing on God, drawing on or pulling on God. It's gonna read totally different. So, drawing out, pulling on God, called in the shadow of the protection of God and Father's tent, and every skilled person in whom the Lord had put ability, everyone whose heart stirred him to come do the work, they received from drawing out, pulling on God, <laughs> all the offerings which the Israelites had brought for the construction of the sanctuary and prepared service. Service. And they continue to bring him free will, voluntary offerings every morning. And all the skilled men who were doing all the work in the sanctuary came, each one from the work which he was doing, and they said to drawing out, pulling on God, the people are bringing much more than enough to construction. So he's drawing out or pulling from God, and look how much they're getting. The people are bringing more than enough for the construction of the work which the Lord has commanded us to do. So, who's in charge? His name's drawing out or pulling on God. So drawing out or pulling on God issued a command, and it was proclaimed throughout the camp, Let neither man nor woman do any more work uh, for the sanctuary offering. We are g -g 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 good. So the people restrained from bringing anything more from the, for the material they had was sufficient. And there we go again more than enough to do all the work. So I like this phrase. It gets highlighted. All right, cool. So see what doing a little word search can do? And I don't want to leave this looking really lame -o. So let's take a look. So mm, let's pick a name. Solomon. Song of Solomon. Song of Psalms. So we'll go to Solomon. What does his name actually mean? You probably know, but if you don't, let's get a word. And it's not, here it is. Solomon means peaceableness. Hmm, a peaceable client in avoid argument or violent conflict. They were free from argument or conflict. Huh, peaceableness. Maybe that's irony. So, but he did a good job running and ruling for a long time. And then let's look up Samson and Delilah, right? So if we looked up Samson, what's his name? Mean? This does not really go with today's. We're just looking up. 
Samson. Huh, Samson's not in here? So weird that they didn't do some of the main ones like David, right? David's got to be in here. David. Who's David mean? In ancient Aramaic. I love it. Hmm. Very popular with or much used by a specified set of people being so close. The mountain hut was beloved of him in his days outing. A much loved person, David. He watched his beloved. Hmm. Well, anyways, it's open for more from this book, but we're not going to give up. It'll come in handy somewhere. The Bazal and the Oliab was pretty fun. We didn't get it from that book, but. So anyways, uh, <clears throat> Tabernacle got paid for. We got more than enough. Construction proceeds. Construction continues. There's probably some lessons in here. Or God would not have written it, so let's read it. Construction proceeds. All the skilled men among them who were doing the work on the tabernacle made ten curtains of fine twisted linen and blue, purple, and scarlet fabric with cherubim worked into them. The work of an embroiderer, Bazalel, made them. Each curtain was 28 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. Rectangle. Four of the curtains were one size. Bazalel joined five curtains one to another, and the other five curtains he joined one to another. He made loops of blue on the edge of the outermost curtain. So it talks about the detail of making the curtains. So there's some fine work. Oh, there's probably so much to dig in here with numbers. But basically, they built it. Construction continues. Let's get a picture of heaven, right? So how you? this is a picture of heaven. Oh, why don't I want to go through? I'm going to make myself go through. Why do I want to skip this? I'm not skipping this. All the skilled men among them were doing the work of the tabernacle. made ten curtains with twisted blue linen, purple, and scarlet fabric with cherubim worked into them. The work of an embroiderer, Bezalel, made them. Each curtain was 28 cubits and 4 cubits wide. The curtains were one size. Bezalel joined five curtains, one to another, and the other five curtains he joined one to another. He made loops of blue on the edge of the outermost curtain in the first set. He also did this on the edge of the curtain that was outermost on the second set. He made 50 loops in the one curtain of the first set and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain which was in the second set. 100. The loops were opposite one another. So 50 and 50, do they come, come together and become... Something you stick the pole up and it holds both together. Yeah, so you stick a pole up and like you put the loops like you're looking down a pipe and then you stick a pole up and it probably kind of makes all the curtains as though they um, are held together by a pole. That's my best guess there. The loops were opposite one another. He made 50 gold hooks. Oh, hooks. He didn't use a pole. He made 50 gold hooks and joined the curtains together with the hooks so that the tabernacle became a unit. Of course, I'd like to see that. Of course, yeah. I, I love it. So, let's take a look. Let's take a look. That's what Ian Clayton would say. Images. Thank God for Google, right? Um... Hmm. Let me see the hooks. Huh. So maybe that's what it looked like. Uh, 
Those are on poles. Reflecting the glory of the Lord. Hmm. No, nope, we're not getting anything good on that. <clears throat> then he made curtains of goat's hair for the tent over the tabernacle. He made 11 curtains in all. Each curtain was 30 cubits long and 4 cubits wide. And 11 curtains were of equal size. Bezalel joined 5 curtains by themselves to another six curtains. He made 50 loops on the outside of the outermost set. He made 50 loops on the curtain of the second set. He made 50 bronze hooks and joined the tent unit into one, together into one unit. He made a third covering for the tent of rams skins dyed red. And above it, huh, the tent of rams skins dyed red. And above it, a fourth covering of porpoises skin. Bazalel made um, boards of acacia wood for the upright framework of the tabernacle. Each board, boat, um, board was 10 cubits. Oh, there's got to be something amazing. Let's just see. Now we're talking. Hmm. That is a little more impressive than some of the lame stuff we saw. Maybe the rooms on the sides of the priests. Inner sanctuary, most holy place. Nave. Hmm. There's an altar you can put a bunch of rams and goats. That looks like a much more serious altar. It's interesting, they all had these big altars to offer stuff to God back then. Like, why did they get away with that? Five Hanukkahs. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know if that's legit. Let's see. That looks computer rendered to me. Yeah. Ooh, the Holy of Holies. Um, let's see what we got here. No, we're looking for curtains. Hmm. Well, it looks like I'm surprised that Bezazel. Let's see. What is there about these 50 rams? Hmm. Oh, there you go. Finally. There's so there's the ring. Maybe there's well. Now those are like curtain hangers. Somebody do it right. Did anybody do it right? Somebody had to do it right. Someone on earth. It's a fashion designer. Okay, oh, there you go. Instruction for homemade tabernacle. In the red and the purple.
Lord, what do you want us to learn? Holy Spirit, what do you want us to learn about the design of your tabernacle? Is it something we need to know in this day? All right. Um, so eight board center circuits and all this detail construction continues. Tabernacle completed. And 3820. So then Bezazel made the altar of the burnt offering out of acacia wood. Made the altar of burnt offering out of acacia wood. Wouldn't it burn up? Its top was square, five cubits long, and five... Uh, that's not very wide. Like Your elbow to your middle finger is a cubit. So it's five elbows. That's not as long as that big... Sap, uh, made an altar of burnt offering wood. The top square was square, five cubits, so if you... Five by five and three cubits high. So I'd say that from your middle finger to your elbow is two feet, and there's five of those. So it was ten foot by three times two. Ten by six. Ten by six and then three cubits high, which is three times two, six. Hmm. Yeah, six feet high. All right, and he made its horns non-shaped, uh, horn-shaped projections on the four corners and the four Horns were one piece with it, and he overlaid it with bronze. He made all the utensils and vessels of the altar. Oh my gosh. Ah, excuse me. And he made all the utensils and vessels of the altar, the burnt offering, the pots, shovels, basins to catch the blood and sacrifice an animal. He made meat hooks and fire pans, sort of live coals. He made all his utensils of bronze. He made for the altar a grating of bronze, a mesh under its rim. Extending halfway up it, he cast four rings for the four corners of the bronze, grating as holders for carrying poles. And he made the carrying poles of acacia wood and overlaid bronze. It's just so much faster to look here, and you see it, and you're like, oh. Here we go. Why? There you go. So it's about six feet high, three times two. So a cubit, a cubit, a cubit. Maybe that's an arm, arm, arm. So I guess a cubit's a little less than two feet. It's a foot and a half, foot and a half. That looks about three foot, three foot, and then a foot and a half would be like shoulder length high. And then this was um, 10 by six. Hmm. So this is as high as it is wide. Not quite a square, it looks rectangular. But anyways, these are poles of the five bronze rings, the five bronze rings. There's the altar. Huh. Maybe that's more of what it looked like. Wow, that's ins that's awesome. That's what Jesus looked like. Oh wow! And the angels bowed their wings. That is a pretty cool photograph. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. The curtains on one side of the court, the gate were 15 cubits, with their three support poles and their three sockets, and the same for the other side of the court gate. Left and right of the court gate, there were curtains 15 cubits. So 15 times a foot and a half, so it's 15 plus half, 15 plus half, so it's 7.5, so we're at 22 point, call it 23 feet-ish. Okay, so left and right, so that's two stories. Left and right court gate were the curtains of 15 cubits, and there are three support poles and there are three sockets. All the curtains around the court were of fine twisted linen. The sockets of the support poles were made of bronze. The hooks of the support poles and their connecting rings were made of silver, and the silver overlaid their tops. All the support poles of the court had silver connecting rings. So we had gold rings earlier, and now we have silver connecting rings. The silver curtain of the gate of the courtyard on the east side was the work of an embroiderer in blue, purple, scarlet fabric, and fine twisted linen. It was 20 cubits, so a foot and a half times 20, so we've got 20 plus a half is 30. So 30 feet long, along with 5 cubits high, which is 7.5, corresponding with the court's curtains. So what do we have? 30 by 7.5. Okay. 
Uh, their four support poles and their four sockets were bronze. So we had gold and then we had silver and now we have bronze. Their hooks are silver. Okay, the hooks are always silver. So we have bronze in the design, hooks made of silver. That must have been stunning. And silver overlaid the tops of their connecting rings. All the pegs of the tabernacle and the cord were of bronze. That's 3820. Oh my gosh, that's 3820. So, the cost of the tabernacle. Hmm. That's interesting. Oh, how much did it cost? This is some of the things of the tabernacle, the tabernacle of the testimony as counted according to the command of Moses uh, for the work of the Levites under the direction of Ithamar, under the direction of Ithamar. Well, we're going to read it and then go back for names, but Ithamar, the son of Aaron, the priest, now Bezazel, or Bazalel, um, I think Bezazel, Azazel is a fallen angel from the book of Enoch, not a good thing. Uh, so it's like bedazzle, bedazzle me, right? Maybe that's where bedazzle came from. Ha! Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, made everything that the Lord commanded Moses. With him was Aholiab, the son of Ahishamach, of the tribe of Dan, an engraver and a skillful craftsman, and an embroiderer in blue and in purple and in scarlet fabric, and in fine linen. All the gold that was used for the work in the building and furnishing of the sanctuary, the gold from the way of offering, the nine, 29 talents and 730 shekels, according to the shekel of the sanctuary. So guess what? 29 talents and 730 shekels. So people brought a sanctuary, according to the sanctuary, the shekel of the sanctuary. So only 730 people gave to this. Is that true? The silver from those congregation who was assembled and counted was a hundred talents, and maybe these and one thousand seven hundred seventy-five shekels. So talents must be a bigger denomination, I would think, and then shekels are like dollars, coins, or half dollars, or something, according to the shekel of the sanctuary for everyone who was counted from twenty years old upward. Oh, there were six hundred and. Three, 550 men. The hundred talents of silver were for casting the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets of the veil, partition curtain, and the hundred sockets for the hundred talents. Of, we could divide it out and figure out who brought what or what the average bring was, but basically there was more than enough. I think that's the point here. Of the 1775, you made hooks for this and that. The zazel sockets of the doorway. So this really talks about the design if you want to get into the design and later which is cool all right so well we wrap this up um let's see do, what did we get out of this one that was new last time we talked about that and that uh joash and then part two we talked about, so gifts were brought the escape slaves they basically gave all the gold that was on their bodies that had been put there by an enslaving owner um pharaoh of egypt and declared that they were free from that and um so, Lord, uh, thank you that we can bring our gifts to you. Um, all the gifts are, are, are laughable gifts to you um, of what we have, the best that we have from the slavery that we've escaped from in the realm of sin. So, Lord, we, we bring these to you and uh, the, our best, the best that we have, um, declaring... Um, that we're not owned by an earthly king, but we are breaking that off and declaring that we are yours. We are God's. And thank you that your spirit moves us and guides us and leads us in all truth to do that. Um, thank you that we can give our our hopes of provision and, and the methods of payment, our signet ring, so to speak, and our method of payment and provision to declare that you, God, are our provision, our only provision. A priest, the only provision was the Lord. And you're our new method of payment. You're going to take care of everything. You own a cattle. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. And, uh, Father, we know that you've already done and died and done this. So we thank you for what you've done for that. 
and thank you that there was more than enough. More than enough. Uh, thank you that you used Father's tent and in the shadow of God to guide your people. So we just thank you for what you're doing as you're drawing out and pulling. You're creating more than enough. We're hiding in your shadow, and we are stepping into everything you have for us. Thank you that your answers are yes and amen. We love you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen.